What's up? This is Santi, and today we're going to be discussing space repetition as well as flashcards and what are the tools slash apps that we can use to achieve this kind of stuff, right? So we're going to be discussing things such as Anki, which is probably one of the most popular ones of them all, as well as one of the most powerful ones. It does have some cons as well as, you know, some other solutions of what we can do inside of Obsidian with a plugin actually that lets us do a space repetition inside of Obsidian. Then Remnote, which is one of the um, probably most integrated ways to combine your notes with your space repetition. Neurocache, this one right here, that is a, kind of a bit of a new application that works mostly for, for your phone, as well as another one called Mochi, which is something that I actually discovered thanks to one, one of you, which is Shetashi. <laughs> Shout out to you. Thank you so much for introducing me to this. She actually explained this concept to me in a live stream that we were doing and she shared this amazing application. So I'm really excited to try this one. So this video is going to be a bit of a, an overview. We're going to be talking about what are the pros and cons of these alternatives, which are the ones that I consider to be the best ones. I would even say that hands down Anki is the best possibility, the best application for space repetition, right? So before we jump straight into all of this, let me actually try to define a bit of what is this space repetition terminology? What, what does it mean? What, how is it different from a flashcard? So, you know, flashcard is anything, I don't have a piece of paper, but you know, imagine this is a piece of paper, right? On one side, you have a question of something that you want to remember, and on the other side, you have the answer. So for instance, I'm learning Italian, and I want to remember what is the word for, I don't know, testa, right? Or what, okay, I just gave away the answer, but like, what is the word for head in Italian? And that's testa, so, on this side is like testa, what does it mean? It means head, right? That kind of stuff. So you do flashcards, everyone's familiar with the concept of flashcards in literal pieces of paper, but now we're taking it digitally, right? And Anki is probably one of the most well-known ones, as well as the most powerful one that lets you do this. And you know, you can do tons of things in it. For instance, if I give you an example, this right here is my Yankee, and you can customize it with the background. You can have this nice little table where you can see all the days that you've been working on it. By the way, all of this laziness is because I was actually using Remnode for that period of time. So no, I've been using I've been using Anki every single day, and this is the one that I currently use. As you can see here, I have my languages that I'm learning, and you can organize things nicely like this. And I had a custom study which was just for the sake of this example, and this is what it looks like, right? This is Latin that I'm learning, and Ferre means carry. If I know it, I press good. Quibus, I think it's where? No, whom. Okay, so that I put again, you know, stuff like that. And then you can go back. You have tons of shortcuts, tons of amazing ways to use this and really customize it to make it as suited to you as you can, right? So, you know, Anki is the one that I've been using the most. And again, you know, just to kind of bring it home, the idea of a space repetition is to see the same flashcards throughout an extended period of time. There's a very well-known curve. Let me see if I find it real quick. Okay, so here's one that explains it really well. I apologize, it's very bright, so close your eyes. <laughs> okay, so here's the curve, right? This is how knowledge works. At the beginning, you know a certain, um, you know, a, a, a certain, some type of new information that you just acquire, right? I just learned that the word ciao in Italian, so now I know what it means, but over time, this will decrease. Well, I doubt that the word ciao <laughs> you won't be able to remember that, but let's, you know, imagine you have terrible memory, right? So, ciao, this word, you forget what it means. And by the this point, you know, by a certain amount of time, you're going to pretty much forget it, right? What a space repetition is all about is that whenever you learn something new, by seeing it during a spaced amount of time, you'll be able to recall it. So now you recall it fully. You forget it a bit, you recall it fully, and you, you know, this can be weeks, months, even years. Over time, the idea is that you keep remembering what it means so that over time you forget it less often and you can commit it to memory and you can internalize it and learn it, right? If you literally Google space repetition curve, you're going to see tons of examples of this and some might be better graphs than other. Uh, but yeah, that's the idea, like the forgetting curve, as some call it, right? So that's the basic concept. The more you engage with certain material, I tend to make it in flashcards almost all of the time where I have a question on one side and the answer on the back, right? And that way I commit it to memory, com commit it to memory I internalize it. And yeah, you can use tons of digital tools for this. Again, the most well-known one and the most powerful is Anki, 
but there's tons of reasons why Anki might not be the best solution. One of them is that it's complicated. So if you don't consider yourself very tech savvy and sometimes you just get frustrated with technology, Anki might not be the best for you. It's kind of tricky to figure it out. It's very extensive and very powerful. So if you are, you know, a computer nerd, if you know, if you love your, like you, you love your tech stuff and you're willing to spend the time to figure it out Anki, then Anki is great, right? Now, the biggest disadvantage uh, that I see in Anki is how difficult it is to create new cards and organize all of them. You know, like, it's not like it's terrible, it's not like it's impossible, but if, I, if you take a look at this, here we are in Anki, right? And the way that I create a new card is by adding it like this. Then I need to select the format, which as you can see is already pretty complicated. Front, back, which is not terrible, and I added this image thing. And then if I want to edit one of my cards, I can open this menu, which actually is pretty handy, but it can also get pretty confusing very quickly, as well as in order to make it organized, I had to download a plugin. So things are not immediately obvious where you can find things. So for instance, learning Latin, uh, here's some of the material from a book I'm reading, and you can see in here all the vocabulary and like that, right? And you can add new ones, but again, like it's, it's not a very beginner friendly or user friendly interface to, to organize information. The problem I keep finding is that I end up not creating cards on my own. I end up using cards that other people created. And I believe the best way to actually learn this kind of stuff is by actually creating your own cards, which actually brings me to this other, it's called I Do Recall, but it's made for the purpose of actually making it very accessible, very beginner friendly interface to create flashcards. And this is particularly made if you are someone studying medicine or you are in general a student, whereas some of the other options are not necessarily made for students and you can customize them to your needs. But again, it's another really cool option that I've been taking a look at. So yeah, also recommend it, especially if you really struggle with some of these other technologies in these other apps. Uh, this one is very easy. So I do recall, do check it out. Then we also have a way to achieve this in Obsidian. So let me show you real quick what it looks like. So this option is very clean. This is a community plugin called uh, space repetition, right? So space repetition, if you if you download the plugin, which I'm going to show you real quick, if you go to community plugins and you browse space repetition, there we go. That is the plugin that I'm using. And it's really, really cool, you know, because the way it works is that, let me just spell it correctly. Here I have like a couple of words, right? They're all in Italian with their English translation. So what I do is I open the command palette with Ctrl P and I go review space repetition, that one right there. And you can see that it, now you have an interface similar to that one of Anki in where you can organize things say by language. And now if I want to practice my Italian, I have some cards pending, so I can just go for that. What does Bella mean? Beautiful. And I go, okay, good. Ciao, hello, ingegnere. You get the idea, right? So that's how it works. You can even have sentences and whatever. And you can even open the file so that it takes you straight to where you created the, um, the, epic, the, the flashcard, right? Now, again, right now, I'm just taking a bit of a big picture overview of each one of these. If you're interested in seeing maybe more in-depth tutorials of maybe one of these, just let me know in the comments. Let me know which one you'd like me to dig deeper in. And yeah, I can definitely do that. But for now, let's move on to the next one. Okay, so this one's Remnote. I really like Remnote. I think, you know, I was trying it for a while and the only problem that I had with it was that I cannot store my files locally in Markdown files. You know, like, yeah, you can have local databases, but you cannot have like Markdown files that you can manipulate with other applications the way that you can in Obsidian. So that is kind of like one of the downsides of it. Um, apart from that, I think it's amazing. I think it's in development. And even though when I tried it, it was a little bit buggy, um, I still think it's going to be amazing and I just I think it's just a matter of time before it really takes over the world. I really I have I really have high hopes in Remnode and you know the main reason why I think Remnode is a good idea uh, for studying, you know, is really aimed at students to be honest or medical uh, students of course. Um, yeah, but like it's a really really cool tool and I think where you would benefit the most from this is if you're using Remnode both for taking notes as well as doing flashcards because it's, it's kind of made for integrating the two processes together, right? Now, let's take a look at the next one. So the next one is Neurocache. Neurocache, I'm super excited for this. Let me just make it dark mode. That's too bright. There we go. So yeah, this is kind of like an app where you can actually use whatever note-taking app that you're using. Well, at least most of them, most of the good ones. <laughs> so things like Obsidian, Remnote, Evernote, OneNote, um, Bear, and even Twitter, you know, not like Twitter is a note-taking app, but you can actually bring things from Twitter, right? So 
the cool thing about this one is that you take notes in well notion also works which is probably gonna be amazing right like you can take the um, material the flashcards you can create them in your favorite note taking app and from there you can actually move it all to the application Nurecash, which is a mobile phone app i honestly i have i i can't speak today i honestly have high hopes that's really hard to say <laughs> i honestly have why did I try to say it again? Okay, I honestly have high hopes on this application <laughs> because I think at least the ability to, for instance, integrate it with Notion would let you leverage the idea of creating Notion tables and from there translating that into space repetition flashcards. And I think that's incredible. I was so excited to try this out, but unfortunately it does not work with Android. What am I doing? Technical difficulties, we're back. <laughs> cool, right? So it doesn't work with Android, which is a big problem. I mean, they say that it's planned, so hopefully in a couple of months it might work in Android. And in that case, I think I would really recommend it. But for now, because it's iPhone only, I mean, I cannot recommend it because I have an Android phone and I haven't tried it. So, you know, I, I was trying to try it, but I couldn't really do it. So either way. Now, the next one that I'm really excited that I discovered today again is this one called mochi right now the amazing thing about this one is that it seems to have um you know like um let me show you yeah so this one right here right mochi so this one lets you have a desktop app compared to neurocache that is mobile only and it seems to also have apps in both the google play store as well as iphone you know so the cool thing is that you have a nice interface and if you take a look at how it looks it's really really amazing there it is, it looks amazing. You have your new cards and you can like skip them and you can just like a certain concept and you can put if you if you know it or not, you can try it again and it's very similar to the way that Anki works. But with a really modern interface as well as some really cool functionality like again, like sharing similar to Anki, you can share your flashcards with other people and you can organize things in here and it seems to also work from the phone. Now, this one is there's a free version and there's a paid version. The paid one lets you sync across devices, which I definitely think is, is needed. So yeah, that one's that, that aspect of it is really important. Then like I mentioned a bit, I do recall is really, really good, especially for students, right? Like it's a really, really cool interface and it's actually something very modern and very good looking that if you're a student, I think you'll you really benefit from, right? On the free ones, Anki is free especially if you use it with um, with Android, that is completely free. I believe the iPhone application is paid, but the desktop app is always free and everything is kind of open source and very, very cool. So those are the options we have, you know, the, what do I recommend? You know, like I think that Anki, if you have the patience to figure it out, and particularly you have an Android phone, it's gonna be a bit easier. But if you have the patience to figure that Anki, it's definitely one of the best ones. If you maybe don't necessarily want to create that many of your own uh, flashcards and you can use some of the shared decks that people already create in here. What is cool is that it's very extensive. If you go to the, let me actually show you. If you go to the app and you click on get shared, that will open this website where you can actually search for any of the decks that people have already created. So again, if we go into something in Latin, you know, here you can find some stuff. Actually, Italian is a bit more mainstream, so <laughs> let's do Italian. And in here you have really cool stuff that people have already created for you. As you can see, there's audio and images that come with this. Lontano, Ano, you know, kind of stuff like that. Lontano. There you go. Lontano. I hope that didn't sound horrible for you. <laughs> Regards to the audio volume. So then the benefit is that you can have all of these sorts of knowledge that other people have created that you can benefit from and you can use as flashcards to practice whatever you're learning, especially if it's a bit of a common um, skill or anything like that, especially languages is what I use it most for. But again, the biggest disadvantage is creating your own cards can definitely be a bit annoying. If you're a student, I highly recommend RemNote. I think RemNote is one of the um, clean as interfaces and is very integrated, very well integrated with the notes that you take. I see a lot of uh, medical students taking advantage of this. The other one that is very well suited for medical students. And by the way, why, why am I bringing medical students, right? For some reason, space repetition, well, it does make sense, but doctors have to learn a lot of different concepts all of the time and they have to memorize so many things. So yeah, I mean, it's no surprise that space repetition is so popular in, in medicine. So RemNote and I do recall Especially, to be honest, I do recall it was made by, by a doctor, so he really knows what he's talking about when it comes to like some of the, some of the um, things to keep in mind 
when you create your own flashcards. This one is very well made for creating your own flashcards, opposed to Anki, that is way better for actually having flashcards that other people have made. So if you create your own flashcards, um, I do recall is a great option. Now, if you're a bit more of a casual learner or like you're not a doctor, <laughs> you know, like if you're like me, right, you just want to learn tons of stuff, but you're not necessarily a student anymore, then I believe that Nurekash can be really, really cool, as well as Mochi, because this one has a really beautiful interface, is very beginner friendly, as well as it seems powerful. So these, these two, I believe, are going to be awesome. Now, the limitation of Nurekash is, of course, that you need an iPhone. For Mochi, you don't, which is great, but hopefully when Nurekash release the, releases the Android app, then I can take another look at it and hopefully I'll love it. I think I will. <laughs> and then Obsidian, of course, similar to Remnote, you can also integrate it with your notes. Um, of course, it's going to be a bit less developed because the, um, the plugin that was created for Obsidian is made by one person compared to some of these other alternatives that are either big companies or something that is open source that other people have contributed to. I really hope the Obsidian plugin keeps growing and evolving, but you're going to have some limits on what it can, on what it can do. Uh, either way, like it's really powerful, so I'm really I'm really happy with with that, and I think I really hope it it keeps improving over time. It's not a bad choice at all. So there you go. Those are my recommendations. I know this video was kind of all over the place, but I just wanted to show you some of the options and kind of comparing them a little bit. If you would like to see maybe a, a bit more of a in depth comparison between one or the other, or you would like me to explore one more in depth. Let me know in the comments. I'd be happy to do that. Again, this was a bit of a big overview. But with that said, I hope you enjoyed this video. And yeah, I hope to see you in the next one. So I'll see you later. Bye. Lights off.